At this point, chances are you've heard of phishing. You may know that it's a type of cyber attack and that you should not click on links in suspicious emails. You might have even taken a course on how to spot suspicious emails associated with phishing. Still, unless you are a cybersecurity expert, you might not know exactly what phishing is, how it works, and what bad thing might happen if you do click on that link. This short video is intended to fill this gap. I'll illustrate it all with real examples of phishing attacks so you can see them for yourself, safely. At the end, I'll also offer some advice on how to avoid falling victim to a phishing attack. Regardless of what you do for a living, if you ever do anything online, it's worth understanding phishing. Recent studies estimate that as many as 90% of all data breaches involve phishing. Most importantly though, phishing is by far the most common and effective attack targeting you as an individual as opposed to targeting companies or organizations. If someone is going to attack you, almost surely it will be by phishing. So what is phishing? Well, Phishing is a type of cyber attack in which the attacker lures you, the target victim, into visiting a fake website from which they can do harm. Most commonly, that harm is to steal important information from you. That information could be a username and password, a credit card number, or personal information such as your social security number. As I said a moment ago, the key components of a phishing attack are the fake website that is operated by the attacker and the lure, which heavily leans on social engineering tactics that is used to trick you, the target victim, into visiting that fake website. To see how these pieces work, let's look at some real examples, starting with the fake website. If I'm an attacker, the first thing I need to do is to create that fake website, and in order to trick you, I need to make it appear as real as possible. In this case, appearing real means mimicking a real website with which you are familiar. Here's a fake banking website. If you're a customer of this bank, then this probably looks very familiar, just like the real site that you know. In fact, here is the real one. Can you spot any differences? Note also the place to log in. But if you enter your username and password here, you're not giving them to your bank, you're giving them to me, the attacker. Here's another banking example, and note again how real it looks. The layout, the graphics, the menus. If you're a customer of this bank, it probably looks very familiar. And here's one more example, this time a service provider. Again, if you're a customer of this service, it probably looks very familiar, but if you enter your username and password here, you're giving them to me, the attacker. Now, if you're wondering how the attackers are able to create such convincingly real websites, the answer is that they use tools. At this point, the criminal economy that supports phishing is large enough and sophisticated enough to the point where phishing tools are now readily available, and these tools make it easy for attackers to create convincing mimics of any real website. As the attacker, the next thing I have to do is lure you to my fake website, and I do that with an email message, a text message, or a social media posting. You might have thought that phishing was associated only with email lures, but increasingly text messages are being used. In fact, phishing with text messages often goes by the unfortunate name of smishing, which is a portmanteau of SMS phishing. Here's an example text message lure from that first fake banking website that we looked at. It warns you of a declined credit card transaction, maybe a fraudulent transaction. Yikes, you better fix that. But if you click on that link, you're not going to the real bank website, you're going to the fake. Here's an email lure from the second fake banking website that we looked at. It says it's from the fraud center and that your account has been suspended. Again, yikes, you can imagine how tempting it is to click on that link. But if you do, then you're going to the fake website. And finally, here's a lure from that service provider we looked at. It wants you to update your email so they can serve you better. They've even provided a convenient link. How friendly and helpful of them. But of course, this is a lure. If you click on that link, you're going to the fake website. And as we saw with that fake website, if you then enter your username and password, you're giving them to me, the attacker. How attackers make these lures look convincing is beyond the scope of this tutorial. But as was the case with creating fake websites, 
there are now readily available tools that attackers can use to write these messages, personalize them so that they sound convincing, for example, addressing you by name, and sending them out to mailing lists by the thousands or even millions. In summary, as an attacker, if I want to steal usernames and passwords, for example, I first create a fake website with a login page. Then I send out lures in the form of emails, text messages, or social media postings. Then I just wait for victims to visit my fake website and give me their usernames and passwords. I could then use those stolen credentials myself, or I could sell them on the dark web. So what can you do to protect yourself? Well, a full tutorial on how to protect yourself is a subject of its own, but in short, I'll offer the following. If your internet service provider offers phishing protection, use it. Also, use a password vault everywhere and use multi-factor authentication for any website that involves financial transactions or personal information. You can also find training on how to spot phishing lures. Now, none of this is foolproof. So my strongest advice is simply to never click on a link in an unsolicited email, text message, or social media posting. Most reputable companies will not send you unsolicited messages with links. So if you get one, there's a high likelihood that it's a phishing lure. Now, if you think it might be legitimate, then instead of clicking on the link, you can go directly to the website in the way you normally would if you had never received that message. 